So today's episode is going to be all about how to get more citizens into your town early game to grow your citizen population. And what we've got behind me here is an example of this with little Lancelot here. Hey Lancelot, you can see we have a baby citizen, isn't he cute? <laughs> Tiny little citizen. Now how we did this, uh, if we go to this house right here, uh, we can see that we have Jace and, oh wait, Jason Lancelot living here. Oh, wait, hold on. It's not this house. <laughs> I'm in the wrong house. Okay, oops. Um, so that, that's just me showing you where Lancelot lives. Uh, this is the house uh, that I meant to show you. Uh, basically, in here, there we go. We've got Richard and we've got Catherine. So if you have a house, it has to be level two uh, or above, because level two means two people can live in the house. Level three is three and so on. So at level two, what we have here is a house that two people can live in. And we've put a man and a woman, Richard and Catherine. So then all you have to do is wait a bit of time and uh, they will produce offspring and they produce little baby Lancelot. So that's sort of how you're going to grow your town, you know, going forwards. But there is a much better way to do it early game and you'll also get much better stats citizens from this and you'll get adults straight away. So there's a huge benefit to the tavern and that's what we're going to get into today. So we have to build a special barrel for this. It's not too difficult to build, but it's a special item. Uh, and then these things here and then we can place down the tavern. So the tavern will mean that travelers can come to your village and you get to see their stats and then decide whether or not you want to recruit them. And there will be a price for that. It could be diamonds or emeralds or all, all kinds of things. So you don't know what it's going to be until you see them. Uh, so I'm going to take you through the whole process today and we'll watch this thing getting built. And uh, this is definitely the best way to look to expand your population early game. So I've been to university and uh, they always have a tavern there and it's one of the most popular places on campus or at least it was on mine so i figured we'll build our tavern here somewhere near the university so let's uh, take a little walk away from this now it's just showing me the buildings nearby to let me know that you know i'm going to be pretty close to them which is fine so we want a tavern and we want it to be uh, let's see here sandstone we're going to go for um so reasonably modest building this should be quite easy to build what does it look at level five wow this really is a modest uh, build isn't it uh let's have a little look inside here so they've got little beds and things for people different chambers and things okay that's pretty cool uh so where's the front of this thing that's what i'm struggling to see so it's not that side it's not this side must be around here yeah okay that's where you get in all right so at level oh that's level three hold on oh there is only level three. Ah, okay uh so here's the level one i mean we could always make our own schematic of this for later on this would be super simple to build uh, i think that's yeah it's close to the university but it's not too close so i think we can come this way a bit maybe even a little bit closer to the university and do that i think given that it's a desert sort of town we're going to need these sort of small streets in between the buildings and i think it's going to look nice when it's done like a little higgledy piggledy sort of thing with all the different roads and things connecting them oh my god i don't know if you guys just heard that there was a huge bang in my house that's why I went silent there, my goodness. I, my heart, whew, that is pounding right now. <laughs> my goodness. Um, so one thing I wanted to show you, because it's at night time, you see in chat there, uh, I'm actually struggling to recover from that. I apologize, guys. Um, it's just my shower shelf falling down. It does it on a regular basis. Anyway, um, it says that all colonists are tucked into bed. So once you've got that, you can then sleep and you know that they are all gonna sleep and not like complain that they're not getting enough sleep so that's useful to do so um that's one thing to do okay so uh we're gonna get this building built and then i'll um, get the resources for it and uh, once again we'll do a little time lapse of the tavern being built so in today's uh time lapse chat i have something a bit different i thought could be kind of fun i found a website and it's a random question generation website so i'm just going to generate the question see what it is and just answer it just for fun um so it says what animal would be cutest if scaled down to the size of a cat? <laughs> oh, that is a very random question. What would be cutest if it was scaled to a cat? Um, I don't know why it necessarily needs to be scaled for it to be cute, but the first thing that comes to mind would be a giraffe, because giraffes are awesome, but can you imagine a little one the size of a cat walking through the house? I think that would be funny. I'd like that. Yeah, I'm going to go for giraffe. What would yours guys be? Feel free to answer these down in the comments as well. Let's do one more. I think we've got time for one more. Um, what's an innocent mistake you made that had dramatic consequences? Uh, you know what? I don't have time to answer that one. No, I, I can't even think of something. I need something quick. What's the most boring superhero you can come up with? Um, Pantsman. Pantsman would be the most boring superhero ever. Pantsman basically has the ability to change his pants at any given time. Just like by clicking his fingers, his pants change and they go from being jeans to chinos or smart trousers or something like that. Completely pointless and boring. <laughs> there you go, guys. Did you like this feature? Let me know in the comments and feel free to answer them yourselves. So here we go, guys. The tavern is now built. Uh, an incredibly uh, modest building, as I did say before, but also an incredibly useful building. Oh my goodness, we have our first person here already. So here we go. We get travelers and here's 
Joan. Now, um, show citizen stats. Look at these stats, guys. I mean, 10s, 18 there, 17. I mean, our citizens at the moment all have these 2s and 3s that she's got for certain things. But she'd be amazing at certain jobs. So if we wanted to recruit her, we could recruit her for 20 gold ingots. That's how that works. And once you do that, she's ingratiated in the town. Now, through here, we have, like, the rooms of the tavern. As you can see, they've got little beds. And there's four rooms, right? So you can have four citizens allocated to this, which is why it is so useful to have as an early game uh, way of expanding your town. Because you will get tons of new citizens. I mean, like, four citizens, if we bring them in right now, actually doubles our town size because we've only got four. So that's why we wanted to rush that. Um, so I don't know if I want to spend 20 gold holding it recruiting her right now uh we'll put her maybe later on to that um but we're gonna wait until we get a citizen that we do want to recruit and then i'll show you how that process works so i had a bit of a change of heart guys we actually have a lot of gold after our mining that we did on the live stream so i am gonna recruit her so there we go recruit um oh wait sorry we do not have the fitting systems in oh fitting items wait what 20 gold wasn't it hold on a second let me just double check this um that is that is a two isn't it 20 gold ingots what uh, I'm so confused right now. I was like, about this. Um, okay. That is very strange. Wait, does it need to be my hotbar? Okay, I'm going to go get a load more gold and we'll see if this is. This is very strange. So I, I want to do this on cam because it might be a problem you guys have as well. So we've got two stacks of gold on us now. Perhaps I'm seeing that wrong or something. I don't think so, but. Um, oh, okay. So. Um, Maybe it was 30 then, and I was being silly. Anyway, here she is. She's got a Christmas hat on. <laughs> She's here, ready to go. Uh, it says here, growing settlement means a growing responsibility. You should consider placing a restaurant to keep your settlers well fed. Not a bad idea at all. What we'll do for now is uh, give her some steak to be getting on with. There we go, to keep her happy. Uh, she's now living in the tavern. So she's here. We don't have to build a house for her or anything like that. She'll just be living there. And in fact, if we run back to the tavern building, uh, we can see, first of all, if there's any new people over here, because they will just arrive randomly over time. You know what? Let's turn that waypoint off as well. That's a little bit in the way, isn't it? There we go. Let's disable that. Uh, yeah, there is a new one here already. So there you go. Uh, this is Oscar. Oscar Goodbeard. God, good. Oh my goodness. Oscar Gobbard is his name. 24 Lapis, not bad at all. What stats does he have? Oh, wow. Very good. Look at his intelligence there. Uh, Dexterity is pretty good as well. So we'll probably recruit him for that price. Um, so assign four citizens. Oh, okay. Because it's not on automatic mode, I guess we need to assign Joan here. So we will assign Joan. There we go. So she now lives there. Now, once you have four people living here, uh, no one new will turn up. So what you could do is, uh, you know, like unassign them. I could remove Joan to keep getting more citizens if we want. But once we've got eight, that will be plenty. So we're going to get Oscar in as well, and then what we're going to do is go about setting our two new people to work. And, uh, oh, actually, look at that. That's great timing. In my chat there, you can see Lancelot has grown up and now wants a job. So he was a, a baby at the start of this episode, <laughs> and now he's an adult. So we're going to have three new people we're going to have to set to work, which we might not get all of those done in this episode, um, but we'll get uh, a fair few of them done. So we've actually had another baby born into our colony. So things are growing very, very quickly. And uh, one thing I want to get onto is automating our farms. So you can see here what I've done is uh, got rid of the farms that I was doing manually. And we're going to look now to add in a farm here. And let's get back this way. Here we go. So this is... I guess this is it, right? This is the sandstone level one farmer. Okay, perfect. Uh, now, how do we want this to go? I think we want this facing the other way. Because there's already some farmland here, right? So we could kind of utilize that. So if we rotate this twice, maybe... All right, let's bring it back here. Okay, so wait, is it? I mean, one more? Yeah, so it's actually like that. Okay, there we go. So uh, let's see, we can do it like this. And, oh, I'm in the water. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then that's where the farmer building would be, which is nearer to the town, so that makes sense. Um, it's a little bit too much this way, so we'll go that way. And that, oh my goodness, it comes all the way out here. Okay, we're gonna have to flatten some of this as well. Not the end of the world, but I reckon around about there is gonna be good. Now, I just wanna see, is this too close to the cows and things? I think we're just about going to get away with that for now. These will have to be moved later, but I think that's going to be good. And then we'll clear a bit of that area there. Okay, great. So let's tick that. There we go. And uh, same as before, build options. We'll get uh, Richard in here to build this building. What I'm going to do, though, uh, before we get started with the actual building work, is go over here and start to flatten some of this for him, because it will just save us a lot of time if we do this. Then, what, excuse me rather than <laughs> waiting for him to do it, because obviously we've got the efficient tools and that sort of thing. Um, now, I don't know if I'll time lapse this one, because it's quite a small build. We might just get this one built and then have a look at uh, what we can do with it from there. Alrighty, guys, the uh, farm has now been built. Here we go. It's uh, it's, it's looking okay. <laughs> um, still some sort of things to do here. It needs to be sorted out with like the, the farmland and stuff. But what we need to do really is to get an actual farmer in here to sort of work it. So uh, let's go to the block right here, manage workers. And we've got quite a few here that would be good at it. 
Joan looks like she's really the one for the job, though, there. And this is the uh, the good thing about, you know, when you get these citizens in through the tavern. So we'll get Joan over here, and let's recall the worker and see what she wants. Probably, uh, I'm guessing she's going to want a hoe or two. So we're going to go make that up for her. I think she has food already. And also, she's going to need the crop and the materials. Uh, we're we're going to get her to basically... Uh, harvest uh, so let's see we'll make up a, a few of these for you because you'll get through them um, as they're only wooden and we moved all our farming gear into here so we're going to give her seed she's going to do a wheat farm over there so we'll give her all this stuff all right so let's see what she's asking for first um so she wants fertilizer i'll say i'll work on that more fields oh actually she might need a field i don't know if this will work or not let's see so what we want to do is um Assign fields to farmer. Yeah, we'll make that automatic. Allow farmer to request fertilizer. I'll enable that for now. Let's have a little look at the fertilizer and see how easy this is to make. Um, see, this, it's not even in here. I'm not sure how we, we get that. So, yeah, not sure about that. Anyway, um, what I will do is skip the chit chat and give you this stuff. Um, and I'll also give you this stuff. And then I think there's a way we can, like, is she just going to farm that now automatically? Because that's what she's got. I'm interested to see how this will work. I think she might need a field before she starts farming. I don't know if she'll actually farm on this stuff here. I'm also kind of curious as to why this sandstone is here rather than this just being farmed the whole way through. So, yeah, that's a little bit strange. I'm going to figure this stuff out and then uh, we'll come back once I have and have a look at what exactly it is we're doing. Okay, so it looks like we are going to need to place down a bit of a field here. So, I'm guessing like, we've got all this farmland here. So, if we just place this, like, here, can we do that? Or, or maybe on here or something? There we go. Uh, so, now she's already out here. And it looks like she's coming over here to work. Um, now, this isn't going to fertilize all of this, though, is it? Let me let me pick this up a second. Um, is it an axe better, maybe? Yeah, there we go. Let's move this back this way a little bit, where it's nearer to the water. Let's just put it right in the middle of the water there. Okay, there we go. So now she's looking at that. Now, in here... Oh, here we go. So you can choose the size now. This is new. This is awesome. And you choose the crop. So if we go into our inventory, take out one of these, and put that in there, I believe that's how that works. Or does it need to be the seeds, maybe? I thought that was it. I, I, yeah, I might be wrong. Um, okay, there we go. So it's the seeds that they need. So now she knows wheat seeds is what she'll be doing. All right, I'm sorry, Joan. I'm in your way there. Bit, oh, blimey. A bit pushy, isn't she? <laughs> um, let's get back up here. All righty. Uh, and now, so she's going to start by hoeing all the land around it that she can. Um, so same five blocks. So in this direction, five would be too many. But I think because it's sand after that, that'll be fine. And in this direction, one, two, three, four, five should be fine. We could probably add another field here later as well if we get some water in to get this uh, stuff fertilized. But let's just have a little watch of her, see once she's fertilized all that land, if she's going to start farming. I believe she will, but uh, let's see. Alrighty, so Joan has indeed been getting on with some farming. Our wheat is now planted, and she's going to take care of that for us. So that's one less thing for us to do, and one more thing that's being done by our colony, and she'll store it all in here, so that's very good. Uh, now, the other thing I want to do is get on with a mine. So here's the mine from Mine Colonies. There it is right there. And this means we can automate that uh, process of things being a mine for us, which is very nice. Now, for this, I thought what I'd do is our town expands quite a lot this way up into the hills, and there's not many things I'd want to build up in the hills, but I thought for the mine that could be kind of nice. So we're going to try and find a good spot up here for it get that built and then get a worker uh, sorted out with uh, cracking on with that so um, potentially around here somewhere might be good we've got this little area here that's already sort of inside here this could be really good now it's gonna be a bit of a project to do but I think it's be worth it guys let's put it in here let's search minor and we want sandstone which is there okay so this this is gonna be uh, a weird one the, the guy's gonna have to mine out a lot of this area and stuff but what i like about this is we can then make a bit of a system here like a rail and stuff going in to the hills and this is where the mining will be done so i like the idea we're going to give it a go i think that's probably the right level for it so it's gonna be flush with the ground here but this is going to be a tricky one now i don't think there's really gonna be a way i'm gonna be able to time lapse this one um, and it, also it's only a very small build for a level one anyway so i'm gonna get this built and then we'll have a look at how it looks once that's done so one quick thing to mention is I think that bone meal will actually work as fertilizer. So you don't need uh, fertilizer in the pack. We can actually give her that. I think she will use that. Um, so we're going to see. She's got 14 on her right now. I'll leave her to do some farming for a bit while we get on with building the mine. And then I'll come back in a second and check that that works. But um, if I've left this in the video, then it does work and she can use bone meal as fertilizer. So just a very quick update on the farmer. A couple of things. First of all, she has been using the bone meal. Uh, oh, it's all gone now. There was five in there a minute ago. 
Uh, so all the bone meals are gone. So you can use bone meal, which is you know just handy to know. Uh, the other thing is she actually requested an axe, and it seems that she's doing a harvesting of the mature crops with an axe. Uh, that's what she was doing just a second ago. So yeah, just something that's worth mentioning. She wants a hoe and an axe, uh, apparently. She also requested a pickaxe, but I think that was about clearing some blocks that she thought were in the way of her farm or something. Not entirely sure what that was all about, but just thought I would mention it. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that that worked, that you can use bone meal as fertilizer. You don't need anything special for that. And uh, we're carrying on with building the mine. So once that's up and running, I'll show you guys that and we'll have a look at how that works too. So our mine is now finished and uh, it, it's, well, it's not quite <laughs> as I expected, but it, I still think it's good. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So we go through here and it's like, well, yeah, here's the mine. But I was thinking it was going to be undercover, but they seem to want to make sure there's nothing above it. So he actually dug out this whole thing above it, and it took quite a long time. Uh, so actually, if we come around the back of the mine from here, from where these hills are, it's sort of in the open. Now, this isn't ideal. I don't think it looks amazing. It looks okay. It looks like it could be a quarry and stuff. Like, if we come up here and have a look at it, it's fine. Um, but unfortunately, it's going to need to stay like this until level 5, because otherwise, if I was to build a roof over the top now, it'll just keep on, uh, you know, they'll keep taking it down each time until we get uh, to level 5. And once it's completely built, then I think we can add a bit of a roof to it if we want. Just having a look at it here, you know, we could sort of build the cave back around it at that stage if we wanted to. Um, so it is what it is. It's not terrible. I mean, we still have the walkway through... Uh, this way over here as well, so that's kind of nice. We can we can do a bit with this. Maybe you know flatten this out a bit and have a better walkway through. Maybe put some stairs down on that side. Maybe even have like a minecart with rail and stuff so that the citizens can can use that to get to and from. Anyway, lots of things to think about there. For now, let's go ahead and get somebody in here to do the job and also have a little look at it. So um, okay, let's see. You have got really good strength there, so I think you're the best for the job. So Robert, you're going to have the job, uh, and we'll sort him out with the stuff that he needs in a minute. This is how it looks right now, pretty much like nothing because most of this mine gets built when Robert gets here and he'll dig down and he'll dig tunnels for us and stuff like that and I'll give you guys updates on that you know in future episodes and stuff when that's being done uh, but for now I just want to get this up and running and it'll be pretty useful to have obviously all these resources mined automatically for us. One of the things I've been working on over in my uh, streams is a village of breeder and uh, a bit of a storage system for them so here's all the villages that we've got bred up from inside here this is where they put them or where we're breeding them I should say uh, and then over here we've got a bit of a storage system them for them and uh, we've got a few villages in already with some enchanted books that we can trade for so this is just a, an earlier way uh, of me sort of rushing getting all of my good gear and tools and stuff like that now one of them and I got to try and find which one it was it's one that has two book trades I think it might be one of you guys okay maybe you really uh, okay, there we go. So, Tombstone Soulbound we can get from this guy. It says there, if you left shift, it tells you what happens. Preserves the item on death. Now, I want to try this out a little bit, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to get this, and we're going to put it on our backpack, and I want to see what... I'm going to purposely kill myself then, and just see what actually happens. So, we need 14 of you. There we go. We need a book, and... Yeah, Tombstone Soulbound. There we go. Uh, now, hopefully 14 levels is enough to put it on a backpack. I'm also not even certain you can put it on a backpack, but if you... Wait... Hold up. What is this guy doing? How did you even... Oh my god. This is the guy. Alright, so, <laughs> so you see how he has this enchantment as well, right? On my stream, because uh, we had another one that did that, he was taking up a whole slot, and we were like, okay, we're going to get rid of him. And I put him in a boat. <laughs> this is so funny. I literally went down to this thing right here, and we took him way across the other side there and dropped him off. And he somehow... I don't even know how he's done this. He's got... <laughs> that, is, that is hilarious. Anyone here from my stream remember seeing this? Leave me a comment. He's, he's made it back, guys. That is... That really is too funny. I cannot believe that. Um, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. What, what a legend. We're going to have to do something with him. He clearly wants to be here. Um, anyway, go back to our storage for a second. Um, another thing I've done off camera completely is I've been sorting out all my storage. So things are now stored in a little bit more order than they were before. Uh, just keep you guys posted on that one. Right. Can I give you... Not a shovel... You. Oh my goodness, I can. Now, why is this so important? Why am I happy about this? Well, uh, there it is. I was like, where did my backpack go? Inside a backpack, you know what you can put? A backpack. Yeah. So, if we have this, then we could have a backpack with all... Ba I mean, it's infinite storage, and it means that whenever we die, we're actually going to be fine. So, this is quite a big deal. So, now I want to kill myself and just make sure that this works. So, first thing I'm going to do is just double check that I'm definitely... You know, that's my bed. Uh, and then I guess I want to kill myself somewhere nearby. Now, killing yourself on Minecraft isn't always as easy as you might think, right? Um, so, I want to test it. And actually, I should test it as well, dying in lava, shouldn't I? That would be good. So, all right, how are we going to do this? Uh, we can drown ourselves. That's what we'll do. 
Um, there's a little river just over here. That's probably the fastest way I'm going to drown myself. And we lose some levels, but it's only 12 levels. It's not the end of the world. So we'll just sit down here somewhere like this so that we can get all of our stuff without too much uh, of an issue. And I'll just skip ahead to the bit where I drown. Okay, so we're about to drown. There we go. Very sad. We died. Oh my god. We do. We keep it. Look at that. That is honestly so cool. Right, now, the ultimate test. Does this... Oh, we get a grave as well. You know what? I'll show you guys what happens when you die. Uh, because this might be useful for some people. And then next thing we're going to do is test dying in lava and see if the enchant still works. So, wait. I kept all my levels. Hey, that's interesting. That must be part of the modded thing. I've kept all my levels. Okay, well, that's that's really good then. Um, I, I hope that's like meant to be that way. Uh, okay, so we right-click with the key. We get our stuff back. And the tomb disappears. Okay, very good. So what I'll do now, uh, for dying in lava, obviously we need to make sure none of our stuff is on us, right? So we don't want to lose anything. And what I'll do is just go to one of these random, like this bottom chest here. We'll put everything in there for now. Um, and we'll even uh, make sure that we get all of our sugar cane out. Because I actually don't want to lose that. Because this sugar cane is paper, which essentially is emeralds, right? Because all of those trades that you saw there with the villagers we can basically get emeralds out of. The other thing I'll do is take this out and I'll put you in there as well. So the only thing we could possibly lose is an enchanted backpack, which was sad, would not be the end of the world, right? <laughs> so uh, let's go and test that out. And we can just pop into the nether for that because there is lava reasonably near the entrance to the nether. And now I just need to make sure I don't die on the way there, but we should be fine. Uh, hopefully there's no mobs and things. Okay, so down here is some lava. So once again, I'll do a little skip ahead to the bit where I actually am dying in the lava, and we'll see what happens. And if we keep our bag, I mean, I'm assuming we will. Um, oh, I didn't skip ahead. Okay, respawn. Hey, there we go. No grave appeared as there were no items to be stored, but we kept our backpack. Okay, that is insanely cool, guys. So I would now highly recommend that you rush getting that enchant like I have with a villager breeding system like I've got there because this is so OP. We can now have so much storage here saved, like infinite storage, theoretically. I wonder if we can do backpacks inside backpacks inside backpacks. Yeah, of course we can. Because, yeah, literally. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost because I just died. So I've got a ghost effect for one minute. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just figuring this stuff out. So uh, you'll forgive me figuring this out with you. But uh, I, I'm pretty excited about that. Well, that's going to bring us nicely to the end of the episode, guys. And a ghostly goodbye. You can see right through me. Um, so if you enjoy the series, please do consider dropping a like and subscribing. It really is appreciated. If you want me to uh, answer any questions in the time lapses, I'm happy to do that. Leave them down in the comments. And obviously, I'll keep doing those random generate questions. As well. I think that could be fun uh, if you guys like that, so let me know. Um, but other than that, I just want to say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. So I just wanted to end today's video by mentioning a couple of things, which are my Instagram and my Discord. My Discord is great for a community where you can get notified about my videos and just stay in touch with like things, my colonies and my servers and stuff like that. If you're interested, there is a link in the description to join that. As for my Instagram, well, that's kind of something really different. It's basically just me and my real life, all the stuff I get up to here in Perth, Australia, and when I travel and all that sort of stuff. If you guys are interested in that, you can find me at Kaizen, excuse me, Kaizen Official on Instagram. Just thought I'd plug those two things. Hope you guys are having a great day, and I will see you in the next one.